And we're live. If you can't see the screen, let us know. I think everybody should be able to see. You should be able to hear me. Um, and we'll get started. Welcome, everyone, to our very first purchaser training on buying green office supplies. Uh, just very quickly like to introduce ourselves. I am Emily Sunturin Saratul. I work in the DGS Office of Energy and Sustainability. Um, and I lead on two statewide programs. One is our state's green purchasing program, which you will learn a little bit about today. And I also um, work on the state's electric vehicle or EV infrastructure program. I'm joined today by Shirja Ramesh and Araya Lazelle. And Shira, I will turn it to you and then Araya to introduce yourselves. Hi, everyone. So my name is Shira Jaramesh. Shira for short is fine. I am the sustainability officer here at DGS and pretty much all my time does go into green purchasing and it's really fun for me. So I hope you will come out of this presentation with a little something as well. And Emily Araya is having trouble joining. Oh, so, I, no, oh I, you're here? I am here right now. Okay, um, IT is here and hoping to get me connected fully, but I am Araya Lazell. I'm the product development manager here at Blind Industry. Uh, okay, so Araya will, will be coming back. She is with BISM, Blind Industries and Services of Maryland. Um, so what we're going to talk about today is we're going to give you a little bit of introduction on what green purchasing is. We also are going to talk about Maryland's preferred provider program, what that program is, and why we use preferred providers. We will talk about why we're here today, which is green office supplies, what they are, and why we buy them. Um, BISM will give us a little tour uh, of what they do and, um, and green office supplies on our statewide contract. We will have time for Q&A for questions at the end, and then we'll just do a little bit of wrap up. So let's start with what is green purchasing. You may have heard of green purchasing before. Um, we tend to use a lot of different terms in the state. We, we call it green purchasing. Sometimes you'll hear environmentally preferable purchasing and, and folks working in, in green purchasing will sometimes shorten that to EPP or sustainable per procurement or simply buying green. All of that means for our purposes the same thing, and it's defined for us in the statute as the procurement of products and services that have a lesser or reduced effect on human health and the environment when compared to competing products and services that serve the same purpose. Basically, it means you are buying something, and the green something is that which has less effect on the environment and also on human health. That's green purchasing. We also talk about green products or environmentally preferable products. That's also defined for us in statute. And that means a product or service that is one of these things, energy efficient, water efficient, uh, doesn't deplete the ozone, made with recycled content, or is non-toxic. Um, or it may be something else that we have determined in the state means that it's green. But when we're talking about a product or service being green, we're talking about it being uh, one of these things through its entire life cycle. That means if you look at that image on the right of your screen, we're talking about the moment those original materials are extracted from the earth, they are made into something, transported to your office, used by you, um, ha have its life of, of use, maybe being reused, and at some point being disposed of at the end of its life cycle. The state actually has a green purchasing program. We are one of a handful of states with a really established green purchasing program. Actually, ours has been around since 2010. It was established um, by the Green Maryland Act and has 10 statutory members, uh, agency members listed here, including the University System of Maryland. We are unique to have this type of uh, interagency collaboration, and it's a really um, it's a great program and a really successful program. 
So what do we do? Uh, the committee does a number of things we are set up to do. We promote green purchasing, obviously. We do training such as this. Uh, we also do training for procurement officers. We develop policies and guidelines to help folks know how to buy green. We coordinate with the number of task forces and other agencies and other working groups that work on similar uh, types of initiatives. And then um, two important tasks that we do are we publish environmentally preferable specifications um, so that agencies can adopt them and integrate them into their contracts. Uh, and we also report, we report annually to the governor and legislature and we, we uh, publish all of those reports online. Um, just a did you know, we are actually in Maryland required to buy green. So state agencies are required to buy green products or services in almost every instance. And there it is in Comar. Um, and that applies to all agencies who, uh, who fall under Title 21 of Comar. So if you're joining us from the university system, <clears throat> th this is more a best practice for you. So let's also talk about what Maryland's preferred pro provider program is. Um, we, because we work with them to green offerings on statewide contract. Folks heard of preferred providers? Go ahead and pop in the chat. <laughs> if this is totally new to you or not, um, no shame either way. The preferred providers in Maryland have been put in place to help Maryland citizens. It helps Maryland citizens develop usable job skills, and it also promotes economic growth in Maryland. In a lot of cases, the programs that we have set up in Maryland give opportunities to folks who may otherwise not have access to those opportunities. And in Maryland, uh, we have three preferred providers. Uh, the first one is Maryland Correctional Enterprises, or MCE. Um, this comes under the Department of Corrections, so corrections folks know exactly what I'm talking about. Many of you also may know, um, because you may use them for things like printing, signage, um, furniture. Uh, they do a number of things. I think they do uniforms. Another preferred provider we have in the state is Blind Industries and Services of Maryland. This is an, a really interesting one. This organization was actually founded by the General Assembly in the very early 1900s um, to provide opportunities for blind folks. Araya will talk about this and also to provide products uh, to the state. And then we have a third preferred provider category, which is called Community Service providers. Um, we are using Maryland Works, if you've heard of Maryland Works. Um, the, there are uh, organizations that through Maryland Works provide services to the state, including janitorial services. Today we'll be talking about uh, Blind Industries and Services of Maryland as our preferred provider of office supplies. Um, and just for your information, also if furniture sometimes can fall into office supplies. We're listing Maryland Correctional Enterprises, which is the preferred provider for furniture. Uh, BISM is our preferred provider for uh, office supplies, including paper products. And, um, and separately, we're not gonna talk much about today, but they are our preferred provider for janitorial supplies. So why do we buy from Maryland preferred providers? We are required to. Uh, by Comar. Um, and as I said, BISM is the primary preferred provider of office. Frequently asked question is, well, what if it's not the lowest cost? Well, we still have to buy from our preferred provider. So we do have a um, pricing and selection committee um, that establishes prices at fair market rates. Uh, just to recap, Maryland's preferred provi provider program focuses on social responsibility. Maryland Green Purchasing Committee program focuses on environmental and public health. Together, we work collaboratively to make sure we're doing the right thing in the state of Maryland. And I am going to turn it over to Shirija. Thanks, Emily. So let's get now into why exactly 
should we buy green office supplies? Next slide. While there are a couple of reasons, one, it's required by law, two, it really is the right thing to do, and three, we get real benefits from buying green in terms of protecting our, protecting our climate, supporting public health, and positive impacts to the state's budget. Next slide. So what exactly is required by law? Well, as Emily mentioned, state agencies do have to buy green whenever possible. And then we have separate, more specified requirements for things such as electronics and IT, which have to be EP silver or gold rated, or paper and paper products, which have to be at least 80% post-consumer recycled, or if that's not possible, then comply with the EPA's comprehensive procurement guidelines for recycled content. Basically, their EPA is setting out minimum requirements for how much recycled content a product has to have based on what that product is made of, whether that be paper or plastic or metal or something else. Next slide. It really does matter to both our environment and our health when we buy green. As we all know, the earth has finite resources, meaning that one day we will run out if we're not careful. Moreover, when we harvest those resources, that harvesting and that mining does have adverse health and environmental impacts on those local communities. And then the resources that are consumed manufacturing those products and shipping them out also has a greater impact in terms of pollution, whether that be water, air, or soil. And then when you look at the end of life of those products, once you're all done and those products are no longer useful to us, most of the time they end up in landfills. In that line, in that sense, landfills are reaching capacity. Maryland has about 23 landfills and they are expected to reach capacity in about 30 years, which big picture is not that far away. There are a lot of health and environmental impacts also coming from landfills just because they take up a lot of space, they do leach pollution, and when they when we try to free up some space by incinerating that waste, that leads to losses in air quality, which in fact directly impact those local communities living in the area. So, <laughs> by green, right? Mm -hmm. Next slide. And there are real, real benefits when we do buy green. So in fiscal year 2021, the Maryland Green Purchasing Committee was able to quantify those benefits that are associated with buying green in this state. So we saw cost savings from buying green IT and buying remanufactured and high yield toner and ink cartridges, which we'll get into. And we also saw a lot of savings from buying recycled paper in terms of carbon reductions and in support of reductions in forest loss and tree cover and in reduced consumption of resources like water. We also saw health impacts related to a reduction in pollution from, for instance, volatile organic compounds and other hazardous air pollution, pollutants. Next slide. So we talked about the why, let's get into the what. What are green office supplies? Next slide. Well, of course, if you think about it, the greenest product is always going to be the one that is not bought. So there are a couple of options when reducing our consumption, right? Easy to think of. Go digital instead of print, using and reusing whatever you already have to make sure that product stays in circulation for as long as possible and reducing the need to buy new. Next slide. But we also do have to. We, buy things new in the state. They are essential at times for making sure our jobs are completed in the way we want them to be and achieving a high level of quality in our work. So when you do have to buy new, what should you do? Well, you can choose products that contain recycled contents or last longer. For instance, if you're buying paper and paper products, make sure those products have that recycled content in them. It's not consuming new virgin tree material, but rather recycled material. And for paper and paper products, you can look at 30% post-consumer recycled content and 50% total recycled content. That's generally the requirement we have here in Maryland. For toners and ink cartridges, look for remanufactured and or high yield cartridges. These products will last longer and they're also, if they're remanufactured, 
they are made from old toners and cartridges. Essentially, it is as it sounds, it is remanufactured. I'd like to point out a quick note what post-consumer recycled content means, PCR for short. Post-consumer post recycled content is the material that is used or the material that is gained after a product is recycled. So let's say you recycle a paper, a paper cup or a plastic bottle. So once that product goes through the recycling process, the end material, that is what's called post-consumer recycled material. Next slide. So when you don't know, we're buying a lot of things besides these toners, cartridges, and besides the paper and paper products, we're buying binders and pens and folders, paper clips, binder clips, clipboards, anything, you can name it. But you don't know what that means if it's supposed to be green. So a quick rule of thumb to remember is if you're not sure what product to choose, choose products that have a minimum of 30% post-consumer recycled content. And that way we can make sure that we're getting covered by what is required by law and making sure we are buying as green as possible. Next slide. I really do want to em emphasize the importance of buying recycled. Buying recycled diverts waste. Basically it's making sure waste doesn't go into the landfill. And making sure that our need for more landfill space and more waste incineration is not there. It also creates a demand for recycled materials. As you all may know, recycling markets in the US and in Maryland, they're not doing so well. The market simply is not strong enough to, con to recycle those products. There's not as much demand. So by consuming products that have that recycled content, the state can support its own recycling markets and really stimulate that demand and at the same time, protect those local ecosystems, those local communities by making sure there's not that much pollution, again, related to, let's say, landfills or waste incineration, and making sure any pollution that is there is not going back out into the system and the wider environment, while making sure we're not using new resources. So risk buying recycled is really important for us here. Next slide. I will let Emily take the poll. Poll time. So we're going to go ahead and use the chat. We want to know what types of green office supplies you buy. So please let us know if you're already buying green office supplies. Uh, let us know in the chat that this would be recycled copy paper, anything that you know that's green, remanufactured or high yield ink. Um, I see copy paper, paper pads, pens, paper. Okay. Mm hmm. Folders, paper plates and cups, notebooks, toilet paper, towels. Mm hmm. Great. Thank you all. Um, and Araya, let us know if you're ready for your... I am here and I'm ready. Great, okay. okay. I am dialed in. I'm gonna go ahead and start by introducing myself um, again, since I was cut off previously by the computer. So my name is Araya Lazelle. I'm the product development manager here at FISM. And as part of that role, I interact with uh, the Green Purchasing Committee and also represent FISM at the State uh, Pricing and Selection Committee meeting. So now we're gonna talk about buying green office supplies from FISM. Next slide, please. Mm -hmm. All right, FISM, as it was touched on earlier, has been around a long time. We were established in 1908. At that time, we were known as the Maryland Workshop for the Blind. We've grown and changed a lot. It's been over 100 years since then, and our name was changed to Blind Industries and Services of Maryland, which is much more of a match to what we do. We are a nonprofit led by a president who reports to a board of trustees, and those board members are appointed by the governor. So there are checks and balances there. Um, on this slide, you should be seeing our mission and vision statements, and alongside that, photos of various associates working. The biggest obstacle to people who are blind finding employment 
uh, often is just being given that first chance. So at BISM, people get that, um, and you will see blind individuals filling roles at the front desk, in IT, customer service, accounting, production, warehousing, and all levels of management. So when we say we have uh, people who are blind working in every function throughout the company, that is true. Next slide. Rehabilitation and training is the reason that we do everything here at BISM. So any conversation about our agency has to start there. Uh, BISM offers a top of the line training program. We do receive a grant from the state, uh, but that covers only a portion of it, not the full cost. So the balance of that is covered with a sales proceeds. Training is free to Maryland citizens, and that includes our core program, which is an eight month residential experience for adults. Students come away with that, um, come away from that with true independence. And you'll see some photos here of various programs and also a list of classes. Our core program does require certain, uh, uh, certain milestones in Braille, cane travel, independent living, computer technology, and also offers adjustment, adjustment to blindness seminars. Um, Woodshop, physical fitness, and job readiness are additional offerings that are optional within that program. If you're wondering about the eye coverings that you see worn in some of our photos, um, those are our students. They wear sleep shades during their training so that they don't rely on any remaining vision or light perception. And that way, by practicing completely non-visually, they become comfortable doing it completely non-visually and don't have to worry if their vision continues to change. They'll be ready. Next slide. People who are blind or have disabilities are the largest untapped labor force in the U.S., um, with some estimates of that unemployment for the blind as high as 70%. Um, with employment opportunities, those unemployed will become taxpaying citizens, and it reduces the dependence on government support. BISM is the largest employer of people who are blind in the state of Maryland, and you'll see there I have 179 coworkers that happen to be blind individuals. Um, below that, you'll see we had 2,123 individuals served. Um, that is an annual number from fiscal year 2020. Our hope is that each of those people starts on a path to self-sufficiency, growth, and independence. And below that, a number that I find really striking is 67,419 training hours that were provided by BISM during that same year. Um, those training hours start people on the path to the life and career they desire and also can raise awareness in the community at large about the capabilities of people who are blind. Next slide. So that's the why we do it portion. And now we want to talk about um, how the procurement process works and how it can work for all of us. So buying from a preferred provider saves the state time and money. Those products have already been scrutinized in regards to quality and pricing, and that review process does include comparison to fair market value. Uh, all that pricing is approved by the Pricing and Selection Committee. We can't just go in and charge you what we want, so there is a checks and balances to that. Um, the contract is required. It requires that we publish the pricing at bism.org. Uh, and if you're on that website, what you'll see is a section for our state products and services. It has a little outline of the state of Maryland, um, and that will bring you to this page where you'll always have access to current pricing under that download state price list button. So that's always there for you. Um, on the next slide, if we can go one forward, um, you're going to see what that pricing list looks like. So. Um, it is printable if you choose to print it or need to print it, but the electronic copy is there. Um, and I know we talked about that being a better option for our environment, but that list will be there for you to do. Next slide. Oh, actually, if we could go back one, I had something else. I wanted to draw your attention just to the unit of measure column. Um, we have had some customers that didn't realize that the pricing here is shown, for example, um, 
as a case of four dozen pads and maybe not a single dozen of paper pads they might have bought elsewhere. So just be aware of that. Look at those unit of measures. Comparing apples to apples, we find that our pricing is attractive uh, because you have the buying power of the entire state on your side. So now we can go ahead to that green product listing. This is a newer document that the Green Purchasing Committee um, requested as a tool for you as customers. And we've put this together that lists all of the parts that are green and different items. It is longer than this. It's just showing those two pages. Um, it is available on the DGS and BISM website, and it's an easy way to see all your options. Some of the items on the list will just list their certification and not specifically their recycled content. Um, but I want to let you know, just rest assured that if something is shown here as green seal certified, it does meet all those requirements to be considered a green purchase. I know we've talked about recycling during this presentation and it was really stressed to look for that number. So we will be adding that info in addition so that you have all of the data at your hands um, as far as those recycled content numbers. Next slide, please. So we do more than you think, especially if you haven't looked at our offerings in a while, you might be surprised at all that we have. We really strive to be a one-stop shop and are always looking to expand our product line. Here you'll see some photos of various items we make, including the copy paper, paper pads, toilet paper, can liners, hand soap, mops. Um, these are just a small sampling of what we have, but every item shown here in these photographs is green. Next slide, please. Buying from BISM should be easy. Uh, we want you to handle your buying however it's easiest for you. So if you prefer to call or email, that's fine. If you want to shop online, we're going to talk about that as we go through. And you will, regardless of the method, get those same quality products with prompt delivery and excellent customer service. Um, you can even fax us. I know faxing has been spaced out at a lot of offices, but if that's what's easiest for you, we are here for you. And the fax number is also on our website, business.org. Next slide, please. If you do call or email or fax, uh, these are the friendly faces <laughs> that will take care of you. Um, you won't get a long automated menu here before you get to someone. If you call, you can talk to one of them right away. And those customer service lines are staffed from 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. every uh, Monday through Friday. I almost said every day, but Monday through Friday. All right, next slide. Okay, so for people that choose to shop online, let's talk about this. BISM has recently expanded our shopbism.com site that was previously e-commerce for our federal customers only. So this is a different site from the one that we looked at earlier, um, but we had heard that people really wanted shopping online as an option. So we have added all of our state products onto this site. And the next slides are gonna go through that, but on this first slide, the launch page, um, you can look for that state of Maryland flag. I know it always grabs the eye. Um, that's where you're gonna start as a state customer. Next slide. If it is your first time ordering on Shop Vision, uh, you will need to set up an account, but it's really easy. And if you have any trouble, there's always a live chat button there um, for assistance. And that live chat really is a live person as well. It's not a bot and their hours start even a little earlier at 7.30 a.m. Um, and they are there until 4.30. So that is an easy process that you'll need to do just that first time. And then after that, you should be good. Um, the form for the account setup, I just wanna mention that it does have a field asking if you're the card holder or for the name of the person who is the card holder. You do not have to pay by credit card to use Shopism. So if you have previously used a PO and you want to stick with that, you can still shop online and you can select Bill Me Later at checkout and use that PO. Um, you'll also see on this page that the contract pricing and the green list are available again here. Um, just want to make it easy that it's wherever you are, those items are also there too. Uh, these might look 
a little different if you open them, um, but that's just because the marketing specialist with Shop Vision added a cover to each of them um, with some razzmatazz, but the content, the items, that is all exactly the same, so those items are there. Next slide. Once you log in, you'll have options for how to search. Um, the one that's seen here is that you can click on BISM products. This will take you um, only to state products. On here, BISM products means state products, federal items, even if they're made by BISM, are something different designated as Ability One. So you will be getting, once you're logged in to a state account, um, only the items that'll be available for you, just reducing frustration for anything else. Next slide. After clicking on BISM products, it'll drill down to the categories of products. Um, and you can see that here, they've selected office supplies and brought up different items there. Uh, of course, if you know what you want to order, you can skip these steps and do it more quickly by just using the search bar or uh, using your saved favorites to go directly to the item. But if you do need to see the full list and really examine what's out there, this is the way that we'll do that for you. Next slide. So here, continuing to follow that path from biz and products to categories to proportioner system, um, you can see how the products come up. And also here, I'd like you to notice this little green leaf. Um, that leaf will show up on any product that is a green product. Uh, so if you're focused on buying environmentally, that's where we're gonna go. So um, make sure you're checking for that. I think it sticks out nicely and makes that really easy for everyone to do. Next page. Um, this is just a comparison page, much like other retail sites, ShopVism does have a comparison function that will let you see the similarities and differences. Uh, you can do up to four products at a time, and recent comparisons will show up over on that left-hand side if you need to go back to your history there. Next slide. Oh, this one has lots of arrows. These are some of the remaining features um, on ShopVism. Uh, you can save and email a PDF of your cart, which can be really helpful if you need to send your purchase to someone else for approval. Um, and as you continue to use this system, more data will be here to make it even more efficient. You'll have info listed there with recent orders. You can do quick orders there um, and info that will help you with your purchasing reports. You can even track your budget, things like that. Um, there are probably other features I didn't even think to list there. Um, there is a tutorial at the very bottom of that page, so that would have any other info or also offer assistance if you prefer that to calling or doing a live chat. Next slide. If you're on the online platform and you have any problems, this is the Shop Vism team. Uh, they'll be glad to help you. You'll also see your account managers are listed here. Those faces might look familiar to you. You can contact them for anything, whether you're shopping um, online or another way or just need their help with a product. They are here to help you uh, get to know them, let them get to know you and what your needs are so we can really take care of you and your office product and royal needs. Next slide. All right, this is a tagline some of you might have seen on business emails or publications. We positively change people's attitudes about blindness. That really is what we strive for every single day. And as, start of, as a part of the state procurement, you are a part of that positive impact too. Every purchase you make really does make a difference. Uh, we are so proud of what we do here. There's really nothing like seeing it firsthand. We love to give tours. <laughs> right now, that's not really an option for us to invite groups in. But if you would like to glimpse inside our facility, you can check us out on YouTube. Um, and we'll hope to welcome you in person when we can. I thank you so much for your time and attention today. I'm going to hand it back um, to Emily and Shira, but I will be here to answer any questions at the end if there's something specifically about buying from BISM. Thank you. Thank you so much, Araya. We're going to transition to how to find green products on statewide contracts, and I'm going to hand it over to Shira for this. 
Awesome. So we'll get right to it. Next slide. So as Araya mentioned, you can find paper and paper products, the, the janitorial supplies, hand sanitizers, all those types of things on the BISM website. And BISM, again, once again, is a preferred provider, as is MCE, Maryland Correctional Enterprises, and they provide us with furniture. I will mention real quick, MCE also has a green purchasing guide, and that can also be accessed on our website, and we'll show you at the end of this presentation. Our other office supplies vendors are AJ, Stationers, Cartridge Plus, RGH, and Rudolph. And for that, with them, you can find a whole host of other green office supplies, things like toners and ink cartridges, pens, binders, diaries, journals, filing supplies, calendars, post-it notes, and they all have recycled content and green offerings in their catalogs. Next slide. So just getting a little bit more specific, again, paper and paper products covered by BISM. Their green purchasing guide is linked on the slides once you have access to them. For things like toner and ink cartridges, the way you can identify them on contract is by either looking at their product numbers. So if you look at their product numbers, if they end in X, then it's normally a remanufactured cartridge. If it ends in XL for extra large, it will be a high yield. You can also look directly in their product description. Often it's stated right up front that it's a remanufactured or high yield cartridge. Again, look for those codes as reman, HY for high yield and XL for extra large. For those other products that we mentioned, things like binders and pens and binder clips, the way you can find out if they have recycled content more often than not is if you're looking on just like the item description list, it'll say R-E-C-Y in the product description. Of course, that stands for recycled. And more often than not, it will also have the percentage recycled directly in the product description. I'll say 30%, 50%, 100%, whatever it may be, you should be able to see it on the description. Next slide. And then taking a closer look at paper and paper products, because this really is a very, very high impact area for the state. We buy a lot of paper. In fiscal year 2021, we bought 1,217 tons of paper and paper products, just in that one fiscal year alone. Of that, 884 tons were recycled, which is amazing, super, super amazing. If you go back and look at some of our old previous slides, you'll be able to see the full breakdown of the benefits we got from buying that recycled paper. It's also on our annual report on our website in case you're interested in taking a look. But I will mention of that amount, of that 1,217 tons, 333 were non-recycled paper purchases. And that means we just have area to improve. We have that opportunity to get better and to do better. Next slide. So what if all those paper and paper products contain recycled content that met our requirements? What if those 333 tons were recycled? Next slide. And how could that happen? Well, as we mentioned, we keep drilling it into your guys' heads is that all of our paper and paper product purchases, a lot of them can be bought on the BISM website. You can buy your paper towels, your facial tissues, your toilet paper, your copy paper for your offices and printers, your paper pads, just when you write down your quick ideas and your thoughts. All of those are found on the BISM Green Purchasing Guide. And as Araya mentioned, all the ones that say green seal on it are 100% recycled. We are working to get that updated so it's even clearer for you all to see the exact impact you get from buying those green products. Next slide. And so if we bought those 333 tons of paper and let's say they were all recycled and they all met our recycling requirements, well, what exactly, what type of impact would that have? Well, for one, we would reduce our CO2 emissions by over a thousand tons. We would save almost 78 acres of trees, save over 181,000 gallons of water, reduce our solid waste by 4.3 tons. And of course we have those health impacts that are really, really important, especially in the age we live in right now. So 
in terms of health impacts by reducing the volatile organic compounds by 18 pounds and reducing hazardous air pollutants by 179 pounds were really contributing to overall our respiratory health. And just on the right side, we have some equivalencies because sometimes these numbers, when they're so large, it's kind of hard to wrap your head around it. I know it's hard for me to. So just for comparison, by reducing our greenhouse gas emissions, our carbon dioxide emissions by 1,000 tons, it's the equivalent, for instance, to removing 215 car cars off the road for one year or avoiding by reducing our energy reduction again by buying recycled, we're reducing the energy consumption of the state by 49 homes on average for one year. So these are just some cool facts to really, to really emphasize and drive home the fact that we really do have an impact here at state, that our purchases really do matter. And, the, and those purchases have a purpose that serves us all. And I will let Emily take us home and bring it all to a close. Well, let's pause for questions because we've gone through a lot of content. We still have Araya here and she went through the portal. So um, if you have a question, feel free to either enter it in the chat or you may unmute at this time. If you don't feel shy. Okay, I see one in the chat. This is a question for BISM, a product question. Uh, this is Cassie Jackson at DHCD. She's saying, my agency is always requesting the Maryland with pride paper pads, which is green, yes, in different sizes. I can only ever find the one size, which is five by eight. Um, Araya, can you talk about whether they will be available in letter and legal sizes in white? Yes, I can. Oh, I wish I could assure you that they are. The problem is that tape um, is no longer available to us. We still have some tape for the five by eight. We are working on finding another supplier, but that header was really a specialty item and that company is no longer in business that had done it for us previously. We are looking to add some other pads that I hope um, you'll like even more with 100% recycled content. So. We are looking to add some items, but I can't uh, offer those right now. Great, thank you. I see a hand from Alicia Hargrave. Alicia, would you like to unmute? Hi, good morning. Um, my name is Barbara Doja, and I'm the quartermaster for Maryland Capitol Police. Um, this has been a very interesting training. My question is that um, I am interested in using green. Um, from BISM, so um, to, un to understand clearly, just get on the website and open up an account. If you're ready to buy or just want to browse, yes, that's a great way to do it. If you need a little more um, hands-on recommendation about what products might work for you, you probably should talk to your account manager. Um, and if you don't know who that is, maybe after the training, I can get that info for you, um, or you could call customer service for that. But okay, yeah, it's really up to you. If you're comfortable just going in and doing it, that's great. Um, but we can certainly give you more assistance if you need it. Okay, and another question now, um, do y'all deliver to whatever state agency that you work for? Yes. Okay. Yes, we do deliver, um, and delivery is included in our state pricing. All right, well, thank you. Appreciate it. Uh -huh. Thank you. Any other questions? While folks think, I'll ask my own question, um, and that is, we keep hearing in the news and elsewhere that there are supply chain issues um, across numerous sectors. Araya, um, have has BISM been impacted by supply chain issues? And if so, can you talk about that? Yes, the supply chain has been um, a nightmare. Everyone is doing just their absolute best with that. 
we um, have had times where, you know, we really like to have the product already made ready when the order comes in. We schedule for delivery, get it out the next day. We have had some um, times that we haven't been able to do that, and we've had to talk to customers and see, hey, can you wait a little longer, or can you take just a part of your order? And that allows us to service everyone. Um, we are watching it closely, and this whole time what we've been doing is increasing the lead time, meaning that we order things even earlier, and that we have a larger safety stock here to try and be ready for all of those um, needs. It's been a struggle, but we are doing our best, and we appreciate everybody else that is dealing with it as well. Thanks, Araya. We know you're not alone in the supply chain issue. Um, all of our, our vendors uh, seem to be impacted in some way. More questions? And you're welcome to put them in the chat if you don't um, want to unmute. All right, well, if no more questions, I think we'll move on and share if you see more questions, feel free to interrupt me. Um, we'll just, we'll do a quick wrap up. And we'll start with another poll. So if you all could go into the chat, please. Oh, I do see another question. Oh, good. <laughs> we'll hold up on the, um, on the chat. Okay, so I see a question again for Araya. Does Bism still sell 16.9 ounce bottled water? Yes, we do. And another question, um, do we have to report our green purchases for our agency? Um, so if you are buying from our preferred providers, you do not because we're actually getting that data directly from them. So luckily we have established relationships with with both BISM and the other um, statewide contracts we have, AJ's, Rudolph's, Cartridge Plus, et cetera, so that we get that data for all of the state's purchases and you don't have to report it. If you wanna see it for your agency, we can provide that data back to you because we're already capturing it. Uh, another water question, can it be purchased in large quantities like pallets? Yes, absolutely. Um, and there is, I believe, a volume discount um, on that one over, oh, I don't want to guess the quantity, but I, the pricing does even go down if you're ordering larger quantities. This happens on a lot of products. And yeah, a pallet is, is great. We would love, love to get that to you. Okay. Just pausing to see if any more questions are coming but coming in. Okay, and if not, yes, I see another question. Reporting, if all your purchases are from preferred providers or state contracts, what do you do? For so we have we haven't talked a lot about uh um, reporting because a lot of folks on the call today are not responsible for this. This is um for folks who are reporting designees for green purchasing. So if you are not that person, or you've never heard of this, uh, don't worry, you don't have to do anything. <laughs> um, but if you are, you probably already heard from us about reporting. And if all of your purchases are coming from preferred providers or state contracts, we don't need your green purchases. We get that data directly from the vendors. The helpful metric that we'd like to see from you is your total spend that helps us come to the calculation of the percentage of your spend that's green so we divide your total spend by the percentage of green that we already are capturing so we um so we can track and report that way in our annual report more questions i think you're all waiting for me to start that poll again so you can ask another one <laughs> okay, poll <Paul> time. <laughs> what is one thing I really would like everyone to think about this and, and put in the chat? One thing you can do to green your office supply purchases starting now. Should I have the Jeopardy music? 
I don't have any music. I'm sorry. <laughs> Make sure they all say green before purchasing. Sometimes they say green. Sometimes they say um, recycled content or green seal, as Shira uh, pointed out, is another way to tell. By recycled, yes. When you buy from Bism, look for the green leaf. Yes, thank you for paying attention. <laughs> Purchase green ink cartridges and paper. Buy recycled and buy bulk. That's a good one. We, we didn't talk about bulk, but that absolutely does cut down on transportation costs to bring things to you. Um, create that shop vision log, and that is a great place to start. 100% recycled content products would be wonderful if you can do that. If they're not available, you can look for um, at least 30. There's usually 30, 50, or 100%. Make sure to recycle yourselves. Yeah, wonderful. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Great. Awesome. Great answers. Thank you all. Um, let's just real quick recap. We hope that your main takeaways today um are that you understand that buying green and buying from maryland preferred providers are required by law and that you understand that the maryland green purchasing committee um, is here to help you uh, by working with our maryland preferred providers we work together so that when you buy from the preferred providers you're checking all of those boxes Uh, we want to make sure you really understand that buying paper and paper products are important and they should always be coming from BISM. Um, and when you're thinking about office supplies, generally, if BISM offers what you're looking for, you must use them. Um, you should be looking for that leaf, as was pointed out, in their online portal to make sure it's green. And you can use that purchasing guide, which we put in the chat and also linked here. Um, in the slides that we'll be sending out to you uh, to learn more. Now, if BISM doesn't offer the office supply you're looking for, you can try our other statewide contracts that Shira talked about. For example, AJ's, Rudolph's, RGH, um, or Cartridge Plus. And look for products with recycled content. Remember that copy paper is a high impact purchase. If you do one thing, <laughs> Do this one. Um, you know, first use less paper. And then when you have to buy paper, make sure you're buying it from BISM. When you buy your paper from BISM, you're making sure you comply with law, you're supporting our preferred provider, you are uh, benefiting blind citizens in Maryland through the programs that BISM offers. Uh, you're making sure you get fair pricing that's been vetted through a pricing and selection committee. And when you're buying this paper, it looks like this. This picture on the right has the eagle and it says Maryland Pride. Um, then you know you're using the correct paper. It has 30% post-consumer recycled content and 50% total recycled content. Um, we talked a little bit today about the statutes and regulations and how the Green Purchasing Committee administers the Green Purchasing Program. Um, so all of that we kind of set, we try to get the requirements into our statewide contracts uh, and work with procurement professionals to, across the state to make sure that we're in compliance. But none of that matters without you. You all making those purchasing decisions are the foundation of all of this. So you making those purchase, purchasing decisions are making a difference. Thank you so much for choosing green, green office supplies and anything that you buy that is green. Uh, we want to make sure that you are aware that the Green Purchasing Committee does have a web presence on the Department of General Services DGS website. Uh, you can find it easily by going to dgs.maryland.gov and we are under four state agencies 
um, green, I think this got a little bit off. Don't look at that slide. We'll fix it. Uh, it's under four state agencies. And then the fir first option is green purchasing. There are a lot of resources there. One of them is for purchasers. So we have a page resources for purchasers. Here is where you will find business green products list uh, or purchasing guide that we just showed you. You'll also find Maryland Correctional Enterprises um, green catalog and some other resources. Real quick, I think, oh, never mind. I thought we had a hand raised. Go ahead, sorry. Um, if you would like to get more involved, you we welcome you. Uh, you can subscribe to our newsletter. We send out a quarterly green purchasing newsletter where you can find out about new contracts, new offerings, um, new resources. You can sign up for that. Um, maybe sure if you want to pop the link also in the chat so they can get there easily. And you're welcome to come to any of our quarterly green purchasing committee meetings. All of those meetings are um, are open to all, to anyone from the state, to anyone anywhere, actually. They're fully open to the public. Uh, we publish our event calendar on our website as well. If you click on events and meetings, you'll find the next one is coming up uh, February 10th. Right now, they're all virtual, so it's like this at uh, Google Meet. Thank you so much for coming today, and we will stay on in case there are additional questions. Um, here's our contact information. We do have a general inquiries box around green purchasing if you want to reach both Shira and I at one time. And thank you so much. And please do reach out to us. We would love to help you with any questions you may have.